Hey guys, from this episode, I'm going to make a video series on Blazor WebAssembly. This video series is going to be a full course or a workshop because we'll be making a sample application in Blazor WebAssembly. But before I get started with making an app, let's first talk about why Blazor is awesome and why we should develop applications in Blazor. In traditional SP.NET web application, you host your application on the server with .NET runtime. Client makes a request to the server, server uses .NET runtime to process the request and sends the response back to the client. But this happens for each and every request. Even if the request is not database or web API related, you have to go to the server to perform the operations. One way to fix this issue is by using JavaScript frameworks like Angular, ReactJS, or Vue. As these are JavaScript frameworks, they can use browser resources to perform operations and they don't really have to go to the server to perform each and every request. But what about .NET libraries that we wrote for years and what about C-Shop language that we know and love? And that's the reason why .NET team released Blazor. With Blazor, you can use browser resources to perform UI related events and you don't have to go to the server for, to performing each and every request. But how does Blazor do that? Blazor uses an open standard called as WebAssembly with which you can compile high level languages like C, C++, Rust into a browser bytecode, which runs with near native speed on the browser. And that's what .NET team did. .NET team used .NET runtime and compiled as a WebAssembly and pushed it on the browser. And that's what Blazor uses. Blazor, Blazor uses .NET Runtime, which is compiled as WebAssembly on the browser to perform UI-related operations. DOM connects to your Blazor components, your Razor components, which uses .NET Runtime on the browser to perform these operations. But someone can just go and download your DLLs, your .NET DLLs, and decompile your code. To solve that issue, Blazor also released Blazor server applications where your code sits on the server and server and client makes this super fast connection, real time connection, which is signal R connection to perform UI related events. That way your server, uh, your code never leaves the server and you shouldn't be worried about someone just downloading and DLLs. But these hosting models have some advantages and disadvantages. Let's talk about them. With Blazor WebAssembly, it's a true single page application with full interactivity. Blazor WebAssembly utilizes client resources because it sits on the browser. You can have support for offline and you can also push your Blazor WebAssembly sites on storage accounts like Azure storage account because they're just static files. You can also convert your Blazor WebAssembly into progressive web application. We're going to talk about this in later in this video. The advantage of using Blazor, web, uh, Blazor server application is, you know, you there is a smaller download size uh, because you know you make signal or connection to perform the operations. You don't really have to push your DLLs on the browser to perform the operations. It uses fully featured .NET runtime on the server to perform these operations. Your code never leaves the server, so you shouldn't be really worried about someone stealing your code. And it has simplified architecture because you know you can directly use entity frameworks and uh, perform your database related operations on on the same project. Blazor WebAssembly does have some disadvantages like, you know, there's a larger download size when you run the application for the first time, it downloads all the DLLs and these DLLs are, um, they could be heavy and there could be some larger download size on the browser. It requires uh, WebAssembly support for the browser. And, uh, you know, most of the browsers do support that, but uh, uh, browsers like Internet Explorer, older version of Internet Explorers do not have support for WebAssembly. So that could be one of the disadvantages. With Blazor server application, there is latency because for each and every request, you have to go to the server to perform the operation, even if the even if the connection is signal or connection and um, the connection is super fast, you have to go to the server to perform the operations. There is no offline support because you know you have to be connected to the server all the time to perform these operations. It consumes it consumes more resources 
on the server because you you know you're always connected to the server the best part about blazor is that you can write most of your code in razor components and you can share these razor components in these hosting models you can share your razor components in blazor WebAssembly and blazor server applications so if you get started with blazor server it doesn't really take a whole lot of time to migrate to blazor WebAssembly. that's pretty awesome so the main question here is that what are we going to make in this video series we are going to make an application called as blazing chat and i've been working on this application for the last three four months and i've added so many features that i'm going to show it off right now so blazing chat looks something like this where you can sign in with twitter facebook google and let's sign in with twitter and see how it looks like so if i click on twitter you can see that it authorizes the app and then i can get into the system i can also log in using my manual username and password so that that means i'm going to cover custom authentication uh, state provided in this video series too i'm using mvvm architecture to show and store data into the system so if that's something that you're interested in learning for blazor i'm going to cover that in the series too i'm using sqlite for storing the data so if i say hi for in about me section and save it go to some other page come back here you can see that the data persists here I'm also going to cover how you can upload um, files on Blazor WebAssembly. I can upload profile picture for John Smith here. In context page, I'm talking about how you can uh, add some NuGet packages and show loading symbols and how you can use, um, how you can work with Razor components to show list components on your pages. I added a signal R feature to talk to people here so that, you know, we can make a chat application. So I want to talk to Julius Caesar, which uh, who has already signed me here. So if I go to contact and if Julius Caesar want to talk to John Smith, I can type in hello. And then you can see that hello pops up here in the Julius Caesar section too. If I say hello from here, the message pops up here too. So I'm going to use uh, SignalR in Blazor WebAssembly. If, so if that's something that you're interested, then we can cover that part too. I can go to settings page and uh, turn on notifications. Uh, that means if I go back to contacts and say if I want to talk to Julius Caesar and Julius Caesar sends a message to me, then you can see the title of the page changes by the number of messages that I'm receiving. And that's something that I'm going to do using JavaScript. So if you want to learn JavaScript for Blazor WebAssembly, we're going to cover that too. I'm also doing a lot of event handling on this page so that, you know, we'll cover that part too. If I go to settings page again, and if I change this to dark theme, you can see the theme of the application changes. And that's something that I'm doing using some CSS work. So if that's something that you're interested in, we'll We'll check that out too. I'm going to press F12 there and show that you know uh, Blazor WebAssembly is getting loaded, and you can see that you know all the DLLs are getting loaded here. So this is a Blazor WebAssembly application. The code for this application is already on GitHub. So if you want to have access to it, you you will have to uh, be a Patreon member for Curious Drive in order to get an access to this. Uh, this code. I'm maintaining the code episode by episode. That means if you want to go to a particular episode back in time, you can go and check out the code for that episode. If you have any other questions, you can uh, you can contact uh, me on Twitter or Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.